Hi guys, this is Grio von Personas and welcome back to the second part of the Adam SQ series where we're going to talk about the pattern sequencing capabilities of this impressive instrument. And today we want to jump straight into the pattern page. If you need a more general introduction into the Adam SQ as an instrument, then please watch my previous video where I'm really going through every menu on the instrument page and explain everything from scratch. But on the pattern page, it's all about performance. So let's get right to it. To start, I just loaded up an instance of Impact XT just to show you how easy it is to get started with Pattern. First of all, let's address the question, how do you even add a Pattern? That's super easy. From the instrument menu on Adam SQ, just navigate one page further, hit Add Pattern, and there you go. If you want to adjust the length of the Pattern as well, then that's the lower right button in the same menu. As always with Adam SQ, just tap the value you want and then use the rotary encoder on the right to change the value. We can open the pattern that we just created straight from Adam SQ by simply switching to the editor page. And you notice that the entire layout of the Adam SQ paths is changing. Everything is color coded now in accordance to the colors that I have set in Impact XT. And this is super useful as a visual aid as you're playing a kit. For example, if I would prefer to have my kick drums green, then I can simply go to the Impact XT, change the color on that respective pad and notice how the color is instantly changing on the Adam SQ as well. You also notice most likely that the lower row of pads on the Atom SQ is not as brightly lit. And that is because the Atom SQ is imitating a classic step sequencer workflow where you would choose your sound, for example, my kick in the top row, and then in the lower row, you would specify where you want that kick to play. See, just like that, I can program a four to the floor kick drum and we can even do that at the press of a button from the Adam SQ. Just fill the entire thing with a four to the floor kick drum to get started with our techno beat right away. Now, before we get started, I just want to mention once again that the Adam SQ is not just great for techno and electronic music. It's just that I feel that these genres in particular are kind of predestined to showcase a pattern sequencing workflow. So with our kick drum rolling nicely, I can just hit the other pads, see what kind of samples are loaded on these, and then add steps wherever I want. Let's maybe start with this hi-hat here. It also has a nice delay, as you can hear. Let's add another percussion, maybe some kind of percussive stab or a rim shot. Adam SQ also allows me to instantly change the velocity, probability, delay or repeat rate by simply holding down the step that I want and then uh, turning the respective encoders 5 to 8. And this way you can enrich your pattern with dynamics or even randomness and unpredictability. I can also use the uh, very fine encoder on the right for this when I'm on page 3 of the editor. I can also alter the step resolution. So right now each of these steps represents a 16th note, but it could also be something else entirely like triolic or dotted. And then there's also one of my favorite tricks, which is to just change the loop range of this one sound to something that's not an even number. So that this always plays at a slightly different point in time with everything else. This is what we call a polyrhythm. This is a fantastic way to create variance in your repetitive pattern with just one or two clicks. Of course, we can also open up the instrument editor and tweak any aspect of these sounds straight away. This is something we already looked at in the last episode. And what I'm doing here on the encoders can be written as automation directly into the pattern. All it takes is simply hitting the record button. Very cool. Of course, I can record anything in real time into the pattern, not just automation, like this. Because this is essentially a live step input, all of my slightly misplayed notes are being quantized perfectly right after they're being played. This keeps me in the groove all the time. What I also really enjoy with the Adam SQ is the clear lane button. This allows me to very quickly erase something that I've played and then with shift undo, I can just bring that back immediately.
Another quintessential parameter here is the swing factor. And as I'm turning this up, notice how it keeps all of the kick drums, everything that's on beat really tight, but everything that happens in between starts to shuffle gradually. This gives some organic human feel back to your hi-hats and percussions, which can sound overly robotic if they get quantized too hard. Do you notice how much of a difference that makes? This thing is so much fun, I could do that for hours. <laughs> but let's talk about variations next, because variations are going to take this to the next level. In a pattern, you can store multiple variations of this pattern, and you can duplicate a variation straight from Adam SQ. To do so, simply press the button that says Duplicate Variation here on the editor page. And now you can see that I have a new variation here in the Pattern Inspector on the left. And here I could go for a completely different rhythm. I could even solo certain elements or mute other elements. And this setting is only for this one variation. Like see, I'm soloing a couple of things here. As soon as I switch back to Variation 1, all of the solo and mute states are gone. This means that you could just build a couple of variations on the fly, maybe have a full-on section, then you have a section without the kick drum, and you could just duplicate this pattern across your song, drag out the variations for as long as you need them in the individual song sections, and yeah, your blueprint of the song is basically done in a couple of minutes, potentially. So I'd say let's do just that. For variation two, let's only solo the kick drum, and this has got to be our kick only piece. And then for variation three, we're going to do the opposite, leave everything playing except the kick drum. This is going to be important for the break sections. A full-on section, a break section, and just the kick drum 4-4 really bring this to life. As you can imagine, the more variations you add to your pattern, the more versatile of an instrument the Adam SQ becomes. Of course, there's not just drum or percussive pattern, there's also a melodic pattern. And to demonstrate those, let me just go back to the instrument browser, navigate to the Mai Tai, also straight from Adam SQ, and load it up with one single button. And now I'm gonna once again create a pattern using the exact same process as before. But this time, as you can see, the Adam SQ is going to the melodic pattern layout, meaning that we don't have color-coded pads anymore. Instead, we get one half of the piano view that we discussed last time. And below that, we once again have that step input field where notes for the selected pitch can be added with a tap. The Adam SQ scales are also available in melodic pattern mode, by the way. So let me just go ahead and select a scale, perhaps something like D natural minor would work very well for techno. Actually, on second thought, let me put that to chromatic because I really need that E flat right now. And now it's as simple as selecting the pitch that I want and adding steps for it. This always is the most fun for me. First of all, let me get the length of the pattern just right. And now I really like to go for a hybrid between step input and live recording input. It doesn't have to be exact, since we're recording into a pattern, everything gets quantized anyway. And once I got a bass line that's kind of grooving, I love smashing the note effects on there, specifically the ARP effects that we already looked at last time. So powerful. And once again, I can record automation for this on the fly, just like I was able to in the drum pattern. Let me go to the drum pattern really quickly to switch the variations so it doesn't get too stagnant. And finally, I've assigned the touch fader to channel volume for even more hands-on control. So as you can see, you can have a ton of fun with the editor page to sequence your pattern in Adam SQ, but it gets even better when you start customizing your own commands that you need for your personal pattern workflow using the user page. In my third and final upcoming Adam SQ video, I'm gonna show you how you can create all these user assignments. Hope to see you next week for the third and final episode. Until then.